Chapter 12, Putting It All Together. In this chapter, we're going to have a look at our final unit conversion program. Let's load unitconverter.php in our browser. We're presented with a simple text input field for the number to convert, a drop-down to choose a conversion, and a button to show the conversion result. To use the unit converter, the user enters a value to convert, such as 100, then clicking on the drop-down arrow, they can select the type of conversion they want. We'll pick kilometers to miles, then click on the convert button. This submits the form and reloads the page using the submitted information. Using this information, the script displays the original value and the units along with the converted value and the units. Any number of conversions the user wants to perform can be done by entering another value, say 30, selecting the type of conversion, in this case centimeters to inches, and clicking on convert. Let's take a closer look at how each topic we learned about can be seen in this program. Comments. There are a number of comments in this example. Even if you're the only one working on a program, but especially if you're working in a team, Comments are an essential part of every program. Variables. It's pretty hard to write a functional PHP program without using at least a few variables. In this program, we'll use lots of variables to keep things logical and readable. The first thing the program does, in fact, is initialize a variable called conversions by requiring the file where this variable is declared. This file is conversions.php. Here, we see all of the conversion information that we'll need later on. It's all stored in one place, and it's easy to change or add on to. Back in the main file, and scrolling down a bit, we can see another variable that we'll use called self. This simply stores the name of the current script from the predefined server array so that we can save some typing each time we need to use this. If we were to change the name of the script, this would ensure that any code that relies on this name would automatically be updated. Arrays. Having a closer look at the array in conversions.php, we see that this is an array of other nested arrays. We've used the same keys in each of these arrays so that we can access them all in the same way in the rest of the program. Back in the main file, we're also using an array called conversion names. This array stores each of the selection options for the drop-down box. We're dynamically generating these from the conversions array we just saw. Operators. This is done using the string concatenation operator. Using the strings stored in the conversion array, we can create strings like centimeters to inches by concatenating the names given in the array with an explicit string to, which also includes a space before and after. Decisions. One of the neat things about this script is that unlike our previous contact form example, the HTML form and the resulting page are both in the same file. Remember the self variable that was defined above? Well, here it's being used as the action parameter of the HTML form. When we have a multi-use page like this, we need a way to differentiate between the user requesting the page in the first place and the submission of data via the form. If we look above, we can test the request method key from the predefined server array. When this script is loaded by the user entering the address or clicking on a link from another page, the request method will be get. And since this first condition is satisfied, the first block of code is executed. When the user clicks on the convert button, the page is loaded using the post request method and has passed all of the input elements from the form. Since the condition would be false in this instance, the else block would then be executed. Loops. The first loop in this program is used along with string concatenation to create the strings that will appear in the drop-down selection box. The for each loop was used here because we're interested in processing every element from the conversions array. The second loop is in another file called selecttag.php. This file is also required by the main file. Here we see a function called selectTag with a block comment describing it above it. 
Inside the function, a loop is used to create all of the option tags inside of the outer select tag. We used a for loop here because we use the index of the loop as the actual value of each option. So when the user picks the first choice in the dropdown, the value sent to our script would be 0. For the second, the value would be 1, and so on. This wouldn't have been as easy using a for each loop. Input. The input to this script comes from the submission of the conversion form that's first displayed. Looking more closely at the form, we see that the method is post, and as we saw earlier, the action or target of the script is itself, or this script. Scrolling up in the file, we see the block of code where most of the input is obtained from the post array and assigned to our own variables. The syntax of these lines is actually a short form of an if-else decision called alternation. Breaking down the line, the first part is a condition to test. We use the built-in PHP function isSet to test whether the post array has any value set for the selected quantity key. In plain English, was selected quantity supplied to the script? If the condition is true, the value returned is the one just after the question mark, in this case the actual value indexed by the key select quantity inside of the post array. If the condition was false, the value returned is the one after the colon, here being an empty string. This is a common way to check that parameters are passed to a script before using them, and assign either the value or a default value to our own variable. Functions. Another way to do a similar check is to use the ArrayKeyExists function. This is yet another built-in PHP function and is used to test whether an array contains a specified key. We use it here to ensure that when we index the conversions array using selected conversion, that selected conversion is a valid key for the array. Otherwise, PHP would report an error and our script wouldn't work properly. Let's have one last look at selectTag.php. We could have included this code inside the main file, but this is the sort of thing that's likely to be reused again. This makes it a great candidate for a function. The name of this function is selectTag, and it has three parameters. The name is the name parameter for the HTML selectTag. The values parameter contains all of the strings that we'll use as options. So in this example, these would be centimeters to inches, kilometers to miles, and so on. Beside this parameter, notice that it's being assigned an empty array. This is what's called a default value, and if a parameter has one, it means that when the function is called, a value doesn't need to be specified for that parameter. Scrolling down, we also see that this function has a return value. Using what you've learned in this video, why not try expanding on this example? You could add some conversions to the list, or maybe even try changing the example so that the user can individually select the from and to units. Through experimentation as well as resources such as this video and others, you'll be creating dynamic websites with PHP in no time. Thank you for purchasing this video. We're glad that we could help you get started with PHP programming. For more information and additional resources, the website for this and other videos is www.learnphptutorial.com.